Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. It has been a silent night, but don't worry, we've got a ding-dong merrily of a climbing show for you. Happy Christmas, Teresa. Oh, well, for two days time-ish. It th- yes, yes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, isn't it Merry Christmas? Uh, oh, I don't know. Is it Merry it or Happy? I don't know. Did I don't it? know. Who knows? But Are whatever. you happy? Uh, always. I've got a hat on. Look at that. Um, I'm ready to go. I'm Christmassy. That's the only item of Christmas I'm wearing. Uh, now let's talk about Angie Iter because way back in the day, she was the first woman to climb 9B and she's done it again. In 2017, Angie Iter changed the game by becoming the first woman to send the magic grade of 9B. Since then, she's continued to crush and has just made a first ascent of Madame Ching in Austria, as reported by Planet Mountain. The route is 50 meters long, has 100 moves and is overhanging. Although she hasn't 100% settled on the grade, she compared it to the difficulties of La Planet de Shiva, also a 9B. Her husband initially bolted the route and it's been her project for a while now. Let's catch up with Angie to find out more. When I finally realized that my aim was not a lofty aspiration, I wanted to go for it. And yeah, I made progress and could do and could link successfully the hard parts. For me, um, there are three main crux sequences. And yeah, I also count about 100 moves altogether and the route is quite resistant. This not so many good rests in between and that was the main challenge to put all to link all these hundred moves and yeah in the end i i could do it and it worked out well so this is news now but she did send it over to summer yeah, we looked right. into it. I think she was kind of keeping it all under wraps, okay. ready for that Red Bull video mm. to drop. Um, How can you keep that kind of secret, though? I know, it's right? Like, I just want to tell everyone yeah. <laughs> straight away. Um, <laughs> you looked into the first female 9B. So that's the first time there's been a first female 9B. Well, I guess ascent. so. I mean, it's her, Laura and Julia so far. And, uh, yeah. and they've already done established routes. So. Yes. So right. this is the first first female send of a 9B. <laughs> first ascent it's a is mouthful that, yeah. <laughs> it works it makes sense was that okay anyway let's move on to the 8c roundup and this week we have a dreamtime roundup dreamtime is located in Kershano, switzerland and is the classic 8b test piece and truly a dream line for so many climbers it's a boulder that follows a diagonal line of tiny crimps and was first climbed by fred nicole in the year 2000 this week, it has seen a lot of ascents, the first by Martin Keller. At age 42, he's known for his long-term projects, and by sending this boulder, he concluded an 18-year journey. Next, Yannick Flo made a quick ascent, being able to do it in just one session, but already having done the stand start back in April of this year. And third, Yannick's German teammate, Alex Magos, took two days to climb this boulder. So actually, Alex and Yannick are still in Switzerland, and I guess they're trying out Story of Two Worlds, but it did rain, so I don't know. Quick I think conditions. they're still going to send it, but they're trying out these days, so, you know, wait up for the next week's uh, new Is show. Is that a prediction? Are you predicting a send for next week's new show? They really need to dry those holds. Right. You, so I feel like I think there's going to be a lot of chop- You'd be patting. Yeah, like, I'll go. I'll go right roll. back. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to this weekend. I was like, I'm gonna just stroll around Crescano and like look for them. But then I realized that's creepy. It is creepy, so. especially as you have a crush on Magus. Silence from Teresa there. Right, let's move on to uh, <laughs> comp climbing news, uh, and some Olympic places have been given away. As the year draws to a close, there was still time for some comp climbing, and both the Oceania and African IFSC Championships took place last week. There were four Olympic places in total up for grabs between the two competitions. First to Africa, and it was South African Erin Sterkenberg who won the combined for the women. She won the speed, bouldering and lead sections to get the perfect score. For the men, it was South African Christopher Kossa who took the gold and that Olympic ticket in a close battle with his teammate David Nwad. 
Christopher won the speed, came fourth in the boulder and then climbed last and got the only top on the lead wall to win and leave him at the top of the rankings. On to Sydney in Australia, and for the women, it was Australia's Oceana McKenzie who had a perfect combined final, winning all three events. The 18-year-old climbed brilliantly and is looking forward to next year. For the men, it was Australia's Tom O'Halloran who was Mr. Consistent. He was second in all three events and won with eight points. With comp climbing done for the year, we now know all the athletes will be heading to Tokyo in 2021. So it has felt like a massive journey, this Olympic thing, especially with the delays, obviously. Yeah. But I feel like people have been qualifying, talking about this event for just, well, they have been for years and years and years. We've now got a list of athletes. Uh, so congratulations to everyone who managed to get a ticket and a place and good luck for next year. Yeah, done. All decided. No more swapping around of athletes. Yeah, we're finito. Finished. <laughs> Toad. Master. Abbiamo finito. Bene. Uh, next up, more bouldering news from Varazze. Gioia is the first 8C plus in the world. It was first sent by Christian Core back in 2008, who proposed a grade of 8C, but then, three years later, Adam Ondra upgraded it to 8C+. Then the grade was disputed again by Nale Hukataivo. Regardless of the grade, it's a hard climb, and Nicolò Ceria has made the fourth ascent of this boulder. So interesting boulder, it got upgraded by Adam Ondra. Rare, rare occurrence. Rare, that. very rare, but because of that, I do feel it's... Um, you know, it's a it's legit a 8C plus. Yeah, even though there's some history of like glued holds to keep the boulder how it is. Um, but anyway, it's super hard and I'm pretty sure it's an 8C plus. Awesome. Okay, right. Mountaineering news and we're heading to Austria. Simon Messner and Martin Sieberger have added two new routes to the north base of the Grossa Grena in the Zillertal Alps. This story was found on Planet Mountain. The two routes were climbed in November and are likely to be the first mixed climbs on the face. Caesegrena has difficulties up to M6 plus and ideally needs good ice. The second route is called Norantramp and has sections up to M3, water ice 3 and 70 degree slopes. They saw this line whilst climbing the first line and returned to solo the route. Always good to see mountaineering news. Uh, here in Chamonix, we had some ice, very briefly. I think it was about a day of ice, and then right. it all melted. melted, and it's gone. In fact, it, rock climbing is kind of more Chamonix at the moment than anything else. But throughout the rest of the Alps, there is good conditions. So, uh, yeah, nice to see that ticking along. Bene. 9B counter time. <laughs> Nine B. We actually have a nine B this week. We do, um, and that means that we do our double. So there's the 2020 women's nine A counter. Yes. That, as we previously discussed, uh, they get a nine B ticked off, and you get three points. Three points. Yep. So uh, yep, she's on that. And then there's the nine B counter, where of course she gets some points for that as well. Um, One. And then yours, the eight C plus you were chatting 8C+. about. Eight C plus. Who's that? They're all uh, <laughs> Nikki Cherry. I should already be on the counter. Okay, cool. Right. He's on the online one for sure. There we go. It's beautiful on screen. Thank you, <laughs> Teresa, for doing that. No problems. It's a content countdown. Da -da 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 -da. You go. Very good. Did you, is that your favorite one of the suggestions for the content theme tune that we need? Uh, yes. Well, also, we had to buy the rights to that song. So right. oh, the final okay. countdown, we just bought the rights wow. for this whole... Is that, is that where the Christmas bonus has gone? Yes, unfortunately, you're not getting any money this, month, this it, month. No. We spent it all on the final <laughs> countdown. But I think it's worth it. Do you know? Mm. Yeah, like five absolutely, seconds of, of absolute glory. Yeah, exactly. Speaking about glory and content, <laughs> uh, first up, Cold House Media uh, have released a new vlog. Here's a little clip. We're in Dutchman Draw. <laughs> it's out there in the Arizona Strip. Where is Dutchman's Draw? Out there. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> Sick. So that is Josh and Shah. If you don't know who Cold House Media, Media are, you've probably been living in the non-internet life ages time. Mm. Literally, under yeah. a rock. Yeah, 
Very probably good. if you've been climbing yeah. a lot and not watching climbing videos on YouTube, you probably don't know who they are. Oh, or not. Is that what but I then. thought that's what you meant? Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> they are uh, a twosome based out in Salt Lake City. Uh, he's a co coach for the American climbing team. She is a videographer mm. and also a climber. I think she's former like world, world champion. Cup. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's on the IFSC scene doing yeah. all that stuff. I think she's definitely won a couple of rounds. I don't think she won the whole thing, maybe, but she won a lot. I don't know. <laughs> Josh also used to compete as well. Did he? What, for I love the way you watch, it, you watch their vlog and it's literally cruising up eight Bs. And yeah. It's yeah. just ridiculous I, how, how Well, good having climbed with them, they are they are really, like she especially is so, so strong. Yeah. Like destroyed me. And Josh is like just a beast. Absolute <laughs> yeah, beast. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that is a new video out. They are climbing in a desert in near Salt Lake City. Beautiful looking tower. Uh, next up, we've got uh, a new video from British climber Tim Emmett. Here is a little clip. <laughs> Yeah, when Trevor got the boat, it absolutely transformed um, the amount of climbing time that we got on Anvil because we could go out there three or four times a week and just pop out there for a few hours because instead of taking seven hours there and back, it would take like 40 minutes there and back and we weren't exhausted so you could go climbing the next day as well. So when Trevor got the boat, it was so brilliant. I was really psyched. Since 2015, between Jimmy, Trevor and myself, we've established six new routes here between 5.11 and 5.14. So that is a uh, collaboration that we did with Mountain Hardware and Tim Emmett. Tim Emmett, who now lives out in BC, Canada. Uh, he has been discovering the sport climbing out there. Mm -hmm. They had to uh, paddleboard out to that, that climb. It's like an 80 right. plus. Has he got a wetsuit on? Got a wetsuit on, a little pack they put on the back of the paddleboard. Okay. Did he climb it in a? Did he climb eight C in a wetsuit, or did he take um, it off? Yes. No, I want to say yes, but he doesn't. No, okay, he that, would that would be very. I want to see that. Yeah. I like, think that would like true. and put the get grade up by a good, a good grade, a good grade. Yeah. Remember we did that Scottish winter deep water soloing video? I, I did. And they all climbing in wetsuits. That was very funny, yeah. That was very and they good. got like that far off the water and they were like, it's too slippery! <laughs> we're like, pissing down the rain. <laughs> yeah, no chance. No. You should watch that. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it. It's basically just a bunch of guys getting really drunk and going oh. uh, rock climbing. Uh, but it's still warm from well, it was, the inside. It was Scottish winter. It was meant to be about Scottish winter, but it said the weather was so bad they couldn't yeah. really do it, could yeah. they? So they were like, eh, let's go deep water soloing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they all got caught colds. Mm. I bet. Back in the day when we used to catch colds. <laughs> Just say that. Cheers, Hugo. Thank All you. Right. Cheers. Bye. What's that? Let me ask you a question, Teresa. Oh, what no. would you do if you'd, let's say, for some reason, you'd forgotten to buy any Christmas presents, you've got nothing, you're in desperate need, you go around a family, there's a turkey, there's expectations for a present, what would you do? <laughs> A turkey at Christmas Day, first of all. Yeah. It's Thanksgiving. No, it's not. It's US. You don't have turkey on no. Christmas Day. Is this a Swiss thing or a you I thing? I don't know. I'm pretty sure. No, I'm pretty sure it's like usually a like glam no, or some stuff England like that. turkey. It's straight up turkey. A turkey. Yeah, or like sometimes ham. All right, that was right, Hugo. I'm not going mad, am I? Oh, oh, oh. Right, there turkey. Are. There you go. Right. Are you sure? Is, didn't you have like roasts? Yes, roast there turkey. Oh, do well, you just roast anything? No, we roast turkey. I can't believe okay, you don't roast anyway, turkey. Anyway, so we're we talking about shop stuff. Yes, I haven't bought any Christmas presents yet. What okay, would you fine. do? What would you do if you're in that situation? Oh, Tell I you what you do is a gift card. <laughs> Epic TV gift card, right? <laughs> so the joy with an Epic TV gift card is you don't need it to be delivered because they just send you an email. Mm -hmm. You can then wrap the email or the computer if you want. Uh, if you wrap the computer, they'll probably think you've given them the computer. There's a whole different issue there. But regardless, if you run out of presents, you need a last minute thing, Epic TV gift card's the way to go. Let them buy something they want. You can okay. put up to 500 euros if you're that way inclined onto this gift card. So it's a good last, last minute Christmas present. Actually, I gotta say it's a good like ecological Christmas present because you actually don't need to wrap up anything or mm. print it out. You can just send the text message with the code. So you like, would deliver it at Christmas and be like, hello, I'm very Mom. practical. Here's a yes. code. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I, yes. Christmas I spirit would. going on there. No, but like, you know, there's like so much waste in packaging and things like that. So that's... 
Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. Do you want to go full eco? That's the Sweet way. Time. Yeah. Next up, what are oh, the comment, comment of the, of the week. week? I literally forgot what I was doing. Uh, um, go on, you go first. I went first. Last no, time. we gotta sing. It's Christmas, oh, yes. Matt. Okay, well, we've done Silent Night, we've done Dong Ding Dong Merrily. What's another carol? Well, I'm done with them. Oh, I don't know anymore. I don't know any more carols. Um, uh, what's well, the, just the, Merry the, Christmas. the what's the how about, how about how about this? How about Rudolph? Rudolph the Red? <laughs> no, comment uh -huh. of the week. <laughs> okay, fine. What's yours? <laughs> uh, mine is from Mr. Jim Parsons, and he says, Is it the lighting, or has Matt started the Epic TV Christmas party early? Looks like he's got a good glow already. Better check the office photocopier. Uh, I think this is implying that I looked a bit red last week, which I did. I did look a bit red. I blame Flo's colour correction, to be honest. Have you ever got drunk at a Christmas party and photocopied something that you shouldn't Why have done? Why would you photocopy something? Oh, as in you sit mm -hmm, on it mm -hmm. or like face down. Yeah. Um, no, no, that, no. Uh, no. Me neither. Me <laughs> neither. Would never, never do that. Terrible, terrible thing it. to happen. I thought they meant you photocopied so much, like so. You photocopied your face. So you think I got red. like radiation off the yeah, photocopy? As in you got tanned by the photocopy. That is not what they meant. Then, then. oh, okay, <laughs> fine. Anyway. Uh, my comment is from James Shailin. Shailin? Anyway, he says, I'm disappointed Teresa didn't say like a clove hitch instead of like a garlic clove. Merry Christmas. Um, this was about your recipe to uh, vom brûlée. So, Creme brûlée. No, vom Anyway, what's the, von Brule? The warm wine. Oh, Van Chaud. Van Chaud. Van Chaud. Um, I was trying to think of like a vomit creme brulee then in my head. I was like, that's just disgusting, sorry. Oh. Anyway, I don't uh, get like that a clovage. Do you want to add a clovage in? Is it garlic hitch? Not... Is it garlic clove of Christmas, you think? It was more of the clove. So it's a clove hitch knot. Right, I'm with you. Okay. Actually, thinking about it, we should probably make some Epic TV spoons with a clove itch in it. <laughs> This has got weird. Yes. Let's round Let's it up. Uh, happy Christmas, everyone, if you're watching at home. Merry this Christmas. Is the last show before Christmas. Have a wonderful Christmas day. Remember, stick with Epic TV. Uh, if the family gets a bit too much, log on to all our social media channels, YouTube. There will be uh, loads of videos that you can watch and escape a little bit into the climbing world from the Christmas world. Cheers for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye.